Please subscribe Sporta TV for more information. MotoGP and Formula 1 2023. The Ducati CEO has been quizzed about his stance on the clash between Marc Marquez and Francesco Bagnaia. Race Direction ruled that the collision at last weekend's Portuguese MotoGP was merely a racing incident. Marquez agreed although he laid the blame with Bagnaia and insisted the maneuver was on the limit of legality. The wider issue is that it pits Ducati's star man and the reigning MotoGP champion against its illustrious newcomer. Claudio Domenicali, the Ducati CEO, was asked if Marquez's arrival at the Italian manufacturer has heightened tension with other riders. There are so many good champions here, we even saw Pedro Acosta have a crazy race, he was quoted by GP1. So I don't know if one more or less changes what, in the end. They are all very strong, some are world champions like Pecco and Mark who always want to win. I understand that they like the topic as a journalistic cue, but I try not to get pulled into the controversy if I can. I don't bite. Domenicali was asked for his thoughts on Bagnaia's unsuccessful attempt to cut inside Marquez, which left them both in the gravel. Peko Bagnaia failed to finish the race, Marquez ended in 16th, after they battled for P5. Domenicali reacted, we did first and second with an official Ducati, so I'm happy anyway. But it's clear that when things like that happen, between Peko and Mark, we all feel a little bad. But that's how races are made. They are two great champions and he didn't want to give up on either of them. I followed the analysis that was on TV and depending on where you watch it from, you tend to give some reason to one or the other. Maybe two with their experience could have been more careful, but on the other side, neither wanted to give up. So even though only a fifth place was at stake, they played it a lot and they both took risks. It's easy to make an analysis here, but when you're inside and you have the adrenaline on, it's all different. I understand them but I don't completely justify them. That can be a good summary. Who will earn 2025 official Ducati seat? Ducati have tied Bagnaia down to a long-term contract but the hunt for the second bike in 2025 is on. Jorge Martin, the winner of the Portuguese MotoGP who currently leads the standings, claims he will quit Ducati if he is overlooked again. Inia Bastianini, the current incumbent, was second in Portimo. Domenicali was asked about Ducati's big decision. Having so many strong riders also means that we have invested well in these guys, that we are making them grow and that, by now, they have already grown up, he said. They are all riders capable of aiming for the title. Martin last year fought with Pecco until Valencia, while Ania had some crazy races including, Portimo last weekend. Let's say it is a choice that, on one hand, is not easy, but it is also a privileged choice. Jorge Lorenzo has been asked about returning to MotoGP with wildcard races, as Danny Pedrosa has done. Pedrosa, now a KTM test rider, received plaudits from onlookers and fellow riders with his wildcard appearances last season. Now 38 and 6 years on from his full-time racing retirement, Pedrosa will race as a wildcard for KTM in her race this year. Could his fierce rival Lorenzo imagine doing the same? Motorcycles and racing have been part of my life for 30 years, he told Mundo Deportivo. They are still part of my life, but in a different way. I have competed for 18 years as a professional. The adrenaline and happiness that winning races and being a MotoGP champion generates is very difficult to achieve in other areas of life. But, to achieve victories in championships, one has to sacrifice many things in one's life and has to lose others that are also very interesting. It is very difficult to repeat those peaks of happiness. But now, taking an average of my days, I consider myself happier than before. He shut down the idea of following in Pedrosa's footsteps. Not at all, that chapter of my life is completely closed, Lorenzo said. If I haven't returned when I'm 33 or 34 years old, I'm not going to do it now. Nor to be a test rider. Cars give me adrenaline and competition and without so much risk, I don't think I'll work as a motorcycle racer again. Lorenzo retired five years ago from a career which yielded two MotoGP titles and is now 36. He remains racing, but now on four wheels. I will continue competing, he said. I will do it with Aston Martin in the Italian GT. This year there will only be four races. Lorenzo also works as a broadcaster on MotoGP for Spanish television. 
He described it, very relaxed, it's not the pressure of racing when you're a rider. When you are a rider, you not only have pressure from your team and sponsors, but you are risking your life every time you put on your helmet. Talking about motorcycles is much easier given the difficulty of the job, because it also has its own thing. I have a great time talking about what I like most, contributing my experience to the viewer. On the other hand, Manuel Pagiali left his job as Grazzini rider coach, just as Marc Marquez came into the team. Pagiali gave up the opportunity that many would crave to oversee Marquez's debut year on a Ducati. He has instead moved to the factory Ducati team to act as their rider coach. Pagiali insists he was not tempted to reject or postpone the call from the factory team in favor of working alongside Marquez. Honestly, when the call came, I underline, unexpected, because I was very focused on the work at the time, from Gigi Daligna, who I have known since the days of Aprilia, even without having worked together, someone who I respect, who everyone knows, who has charisma, it was difficult for me not to jump on that train that called me, Pagiali told Sky. Pagiali is a two-time world champion as a rider who now holds a little-known role within MotoGP. He described the job of a rider coach, in my case, working from the side of the track, I try to see what are the most important critical issues that our riders have and to better understand what is happening. In part, you go where they tell you that there are difficulties or interesting things to see. A lot also comes from the work you do at home. Each rider is different, he has his own history, his own characteristics, his own difficulties and his own strong points. On a track where a driver has never won or has always been in difficulty, it will most likely be one of the difficult ones, so I try to observe what happens to try to find advice, ideas, different ideas to improve performance. Together we analyze with the support of the whole team and we try to find the solution to optimize everything as much as possible. Pagiali will work alongside Peko Bagnaia and Ania Bastianini this year. <laughs> Last season with Grazzini, he aided Fabio Di Antonio and Alex Marquez. Di Antonio, despite losing his bike to Marc Marquez, shown with his late 2023 form. Fabio has always had great qualities, Pagiali said. MotoGP is the most difficult and complicated category in the World Championship. His journey was perhaps a little longer than others, but it's part of the game. The first year of MotoGP, apart from very few exceptions, it was difficult for everyone even though he took a poll at Mugello. It was a journey that led him to mature, to understand what to do on the track, to manage many things, tires, asphalts, tracks. I wish him success good also with the VR46 team because I am fond of him, he won the first race in Moto3 with me as coach in 2018 in Brno, I was lucky enough to also be alongside him in the first success in Moto2 in Harris 2021 and last year in MotoGP in Qatar. I have followed practically his entire career in the World Championship, being his track reference. I have a special relationship with him, I wish him the best. <laughs>